Hello, beautiful cloud community, and welcome back to AWS reInvent. It is day four here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My voice can feel it, clearly. I'm Savannah Peterson with my co-host, Paul Gillen. Paul, how you doing? Doing fine, Savannah. And are your feet about where my voice is? Well, get, getting a little rest here as they put us, as we have back-to-back uh, -back segments, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep you off those. Very excited about this next segment. We get to have a chat with one of our very favorite analysts, Keith Townsend. Welcome back to theCUBE. Savannah Page. I'm going to use, yeah. your, I'm gonna use your South <laughs> name, Savannah I love Page. It. Thank you for having me, Paul. Good. Good to see you again. It's been been too long since the uh, CubeCon Valencia. Cube uh, Valencia. Right. Valencia. Valencia. It's, it's oh, look pronounced. at that beautiful yeah, list. Yeah, Love that. Good. Keith, how's the show been for you so far? It has been great. Amazon. You know, I, I tweeted it back, uh, a couple of days ago. Amazon reInvent is back. It is. Woo! It's Love that. Fifty, sixty thousand people. You know, after forty thousand, I stopped counting. Mm -hmm. It has been an amazing show. Uh, probably the. I don't know if it's just the 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 assignment of returning, but easily the best reinvent of the four that I've been, uh, attended. I love, love that. I love that we have you here because you know we tend to get anchored to these desks and we don't really get a sense of what's going on out there. You've been spending the last four days yeah, traversing the floor and talking to people. What are you hearing? Are there any mega themes that are that are uh, emerging? So a couple of mega themes is uh, we were in the analyst session with Adam. And Adam brought up the idea of hybrid cloud. At the 2019 show, that would be unheard of. There's only one cloud, and that's the AWS cloud when you're at the Amazon show. Booths, uh, folks, I was at the VMware uh, cloud, uh, booth, and there's a hybrid cloud sign a session. People are talking about multi-cloud. Yes, we're at the AWS show, but the reality that uh, most customers' environments are complex. As Adam uh, mentioned that it's hybrid today and more than likely to be hybrid in the future in Amazon, and the ecosystem has adjusted to that reality. Now, is that because they want to sell more outposts? You know, outpost, outpost is definitely a part of the story, but it, it's, a, it's a tactile realization that outpost alone won't get it. So, you know, from Tata Consulting to Capgemini to PwC, to many of the integrations on the show floor where uh, there, I even saw uh, a company that's doing HPUX in the cloud or on-prem. The reality is these legacy, what we've deemed these legacy systems aren't going anywhere. AWS announced the mainframe service last year for converting mainframe code into cloud workloads and it's just not taking on, the I think, the way that Amazon would like. And it's just a reality that uh, is too complex for all of it to run in the cloud. So it sounds like the strategy is to envelop and consume then. If you have mainframe conversion services and HPUX in the cloud, I mean, you're talking about serious legacy stuff there. You're talking about serious legacy stuff. You can, uh, they haven't de-emphasized their relationship with VMware. You know, hybrid is not a place, it is a operating model. So VMware Cloud on AWS allows you to do both models concurrently, if you have those applications that need layer two, you have uh, these workloads that just don't, SAP just doesn't, sorry AWS, SAP in the cloud just, and, and EC2 just doesn't make financial sense. It's a reality, it's just accepting of that and meeting customers where they're at. And all the collaboration, I mean you've mentioned so many companies in that, in that answer, and I think it, it's it's very interesting to see how much we're all going to have to work together to make the cloud its own operating system. Cloud as an OS came up uh, on our last conversation here, and and I think it's just I think it's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, cloud as the OS, I think, is a thing. This idea yeah. that I'm going to use the cloud as my base layer of abstraction. I've talked to a really interesting startup. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's, uh, it's a open source project, Crossplane, of where they're taking that cloud model, and now I can um, uh, put my VMware vSphere, my AWS, GCP, et cetera, behind that, and use that operating model to manage my overall infrastructure. So, uh, the maturity of the, of, of the market has fascinated me over the past year, year and a half. It really feels like we're at a new inflection point. I, I totally agree. I want to talk about something completely different okay. because I know that we both did this challenge. <laughs> so one of the things that's really inspiring, quite frankly, about being here at AWS reInvent, and I know you all at home don't have an opportunity to walk the floor and get the experience and get as many steps as Paul gets in, 
but there's a real emphasis on giving back. This community cares about giving back and AWS is doing a variety of different activations to donate to a variety of different charities. And there's a, there's a DJ booth, I've been joking, it kind of feels like you're arriving at a rave when you get to reInvent. And right next to that, there is a hydrate and help station with these reusable water bottles. This is actually firm, it's not one of those plastic ones that's going to end up in the recycle bin or the landfill. And every single time that you fill up your water bottle, AWS will donate $3 to help women in Kenya get access to water. One of the things that I found really fascinating about the activation is women in Sub-Saharan Africa spend 16 million hours carrying water a day, which is a wild concept to think about. And water is heavy. Keith, my man, I know that you did the activation. They have you carrying two 20-pound jugs of water. For about 15 feet. It's not Yeah. It's, 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 it's a 20-pound uh, jug of, uh, uh, of water, 20 gallons, whatever the amount is. It was extremely heavy. I'm a I'm a fairly sizable guy, six four, six You're in five, good shape, yeah. A couple of hundred pounds, and yeah. I could not imagine spending that many hours simply getting fresh water. water. Like I mean, we, we take it for granted. Every time I run the water in the sink, my family gets on me because I get on them when they leave the, they leave the sink water. It's like one of my it's like my dad's left the light on. If you leave the water on in my house, you are going to hear it from me because I you know things like this tickle on my mind like wow people people walk that far that's your whole day water and that's not probably not even enough, enough water for the day yeah we think of that as being like an 18th century phenomenon but it's very much today in parts of Sub-Saharan yeah, I know we're and we're so privileged I, it, for me it was just I mean we work in technology everyone here is pretty blessed and, and to do that activation really got my head in the right space to think wow I'm so lucky the team here, the fabulous production team, can go refill my water bottle. I mean, so simple. They've also got a fitness activation going on. You can jump on a, a bike, a treadmill, and if you work out for five minutes, they donate $5 to Fred Hutch up in Seattle. And that, that was nice. I did a little cross training in between segments yesterday, and, and I just, I really love seeing that emphasis. None of this matters if we're not taking care of community. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go out and Google Fred Hutch and just donate the five bucks. <laughs> we were talking I'm about not, it really, I love I'm that. Doing, I'm not getting, <laughs> I'll run forever, but I'm not getting on a bike. That's just. This is from a guy who did 105 <laughs> a Ks in a row last year. Yeah, minute. I did 105 Ks in a row, and I'm not doing five minutes on a bike. That's the, just, I mean, that's, there is a treadmill, crazy, right? and they have the little hand right. workout well, thing, too, no, if you want to well, get. Well, five minutes, though. I know. Like, five minutes is way longer than what you think it is. I mean, it's true. I was up there in a dress and sequence. Hopefully I didn't scar anyone on the show floor <laughs> yesterday. It's, uh, it's still a toss up. I want to take us back to okay. back take to us back, Paul. back to the, uh, uh, what Paul. we started yeah. talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to know what you're, I want to know what right. you're hearing. Uh, so we've had a lot of uh, people on this show, a lot of vendors on the show who've said, AWS is our most important cloud partner, which would imply that AWS's lead it is solidifying its lead and pulling away from the pack as the number one. Do you hear that as well, or is that lip service? So, I always think about AWS reInvent as the Amazon victory lap. This is where they come and just thumb their noses at all the other <laughs> cloud providers and just show how far ahead they're on, they are. Werner Wolgers, Werner Wolgers, uh, uh, CTO of Amazon's keynote, so that I hadn't watched it yet. But at that keynote, this is where they literally take the victory lap and say that we're going to expose what we did four or five years ago on stage, and what we did four or five years ago is ahead of every cloud provider, mm. with maybe the exception of GCP, and they're maybe three years behind. So uh, uh, customers are overwhelmingly choosing Amazon for these reasons. There's don't get me wrong, uh, uh, Corey Quinn, uh, Gartner folks, really went at Adam yesterday about Amazon had three major outages in December last year. Uh, AWS has way too many services that are disconnected, but from the pure capability, I talked to a born in the cloud data protection company who uh, could repatriate their data protection and storage on-prem private data center, save money, instead they doubled down on Amazon they're using, they modernize their application and they reduce their cost by 60 to 70%. Massive. This is massive. AWS is keeping up with customers no matter where they're at on the spectrum. 
I love that you use the term victory lap. We've had a lot of folks from AWS here up on the show this week, and 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 a couple of them have said they live for this. I mean, and, and it's got to be pretty cool. You look at you know you've got seventy thousand plus people obsessed with your product, and so many different partners doing so many different things, from the edge to 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 the hospital to the largest companies on earth to the Israeli Ministry of Defense. We were just talking about earlier, so it's everybody needs the cloud. I feel like that's where we're at. Yeah, and we're uh, and the next step, I think the the next level opportunity for ADA. S is to get to that analyst uh, or that citizen developer. Being able to enable the end user to use a Lambda, use these data services to create new applications. In the meanwhile, there's folks on the show floor filling that gap, that enable develop, or the, the, the pizza owner, the pizza parlor owner to create a web portal that compares his prices and solutions to other uh, uh, vendors in his area and adjust dynamically. You go into a restaurant now and there is no price menu, there's a QR code. That Amazon is powering much of that dynamic relationship between the restaurant tier, the customer, and even the menu and availability. It's just a wonderful yeah. time. I always ask for the print menu. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you I want the print menu. Yeah, look, like, look on, on my phone, doesn't work. I need something <laughs> I can shine my light on. Uh, I know you didn't have, have a chance to look at the Vogel's keynote yet, but uh, I mean, you mentioned citizen developer. One of the things they announced this morning was essentially a low-code Lambda interface. So you can plug, take your Lambda's functions and, and, and do drag and drop uh, a connection between them. So they are uh, going after that so market. I guess I'll take my victory lap because that, that was my prediction <laughs> that that's where Amazon next. Well done, exit. Keith. Because Lambda is that thing, when you look at what serverless was, and the, the, the name of the concept of being, not having to have to worry about servers in your application development. The logical next step, I, I won't take too much of a victory lap, because the not logical first step is, well, codeless code. Uh, this is something that Kelsey Hightower has talked about a lot. No, low code, no code. The ability to empower people without having these artificial barriers, learning how to code in a different language. This is the, the time where I can go to Valencia, Lynn, it's pronounced. <laughs> where I can go to Valencia and uh, not speak Spanish and just have my phone. Why, why can't Great we do add business value for people who have amazing ideas and enable those amazing ideas by having to stick a developer in between them and the city? Low code market is growing 35% a year. It's not surprising given the potential that's out there. And as a, as a non-technical person who works in technology, I've been waiting for this moment. So keep predicting this kind of thing, Keith, because <laughs> hopefully it'll keep happening. Keith, I'm going to give you the challenge we've been giving all of our guests this okay. week, and I know you're going to absolutely crush this. So we are looking for your 30-second Instagram reel, sizzle, hot take, biggest takeaway from this year's show. So 30-second Instagram, I'll even put it on TikTok. Heck yeah. <laughs> hybrid cloud, hybrid infrastructure. This is way bigger than Amazon. Whether we're talking about Amazon, AWS, I mean AWS's solutions, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, OCI, on-prem, customers want it all. They want a way to manage it all, and they need the skill and tools to enable their not so growing what workforce to do it. That is, that's AWS reInvent 2019 to 2022. Absolutely nailed it. Keith Townsend, it is always such a joy to have you here on theCUBE. Thank you for joining Savannah us. Savannah Page, <laughs> great to have you. Paul, <laughs> you two, you're, you're always a great co-host. <laughs> we co-hosted for three days. We've got a lot of love for each other here and we yeah. have even more love for all of you tuning into our fabulous live stream from AWS reInvent, Las Vegas, Nevada. With Paul Gillen, I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>